our reunification would never have happened. And we should always remind this. never be dismissed as so-called internal affairs in any country. We just can't afford to turn away from the rest of the world. And I believe, and it has been shown during the press conference, it has been demonstrated by the previous speeches and from by the previous speakers, liberals are especially well equipped to take on such challenges. We've got to build a consensus of li around liberal ideas which will appeal to many people on the right, fearful of the retreat of their colleagues into nationalism or into Vatican orthodoxy, and to those on the left who are devoid of a, so of a credible socialist alternative. A consensus of radical ideas that's going to give Europe the leverage to face up to the supranational challenges of our age. Our EU brand has a very positive reputation among people and investors worldwide. It stands for economic stability and legal certainty, for the rule of law and for a level playing field for enterprises. The liberal vision is of a Europe built on deep respect for the individual. Free mobility across European borders for people goods and capital, and strong European cooperation based on the principles of national diversity, the rule of law, and the balance of powers. My job uh, is to ensure the good reputation of uh, our label, and that is why it is so important uh, to maintain rigorous conditions uh, for EU membership. If the label says uh, EU the product uh, must also be of uh, EU quality. Of course, the fraud, uh, European Union is not a very, very fraud and corruption penetrated area. If you look at uh, the Transparency International Index, which is made here in Berlin, uh, it, is, um, also, it shows that European countries are mostly in the, the first half of, uh, or first part of this index. So, but still, every concrete case can be a very, very, very detrimental. And, um, <clears throat> and if we lose, lose um, uh, funds uh, due, to, due to fraud or because of corruption, it can be extremely detrimental. Liberalism is anti-authoritarian. But it is not just another run-of-the-mill-ism. Liberalism is a view of human nature, a conviction that freedom and equal opportunities for each individual will set free undreamt of resources, opportunities, progress and innovation. The European Union has uh, never enlarged uh, out of uh, kindness. Uh, we've done it uh, based on uh, an enlightened uh, self-interest uh, it makes sense uh, to continue gradually a successful policy that helps us uh, to promote European values, uh, interests uh, and uh, prosperity. And dear friends, uh, European values are essentially liberal values uh, as uh, liberalism won the ideological battle on this continent uh, in the last century. We must not hesitate to stand together in the protection of courageous fighters for free speech, like our Dutch liberal colleague, Ayan Hirsi Ali. She stands as one of the most shining bearers of that very spirit of liberty, liberty which first emerged in Europe in our age of enlightenment. 
And here she Ali is a symbol of the So why are we not more serious of what we are talking about? And accepting that there are zones of the world that are not zones of our influence, in which we have to work and push through China, and most of it through India. One of the biggest resistance in the Burma case is not China, is the biggest democracy in the world, and it's India, because of evident reasons that I don't want to elaborate here. So I end up just saying, we can use it, we can use trade, but careful, because sometimes it simply helps us to give us good conscience at a very good price. Beyond what happens in the countries bathed by the waters of the Mediterranean, the good or bad effects of what happens in North Africa will end up affecting the whole of Europe. Just look at the challenges posed by the question of immigration in many European countries. That is why it is of fundamental importance for all the European countries to become involved in the partnership. The populations in other continents have great expectations of Europe and they generally have much more admiration and appreciation for the European Union than we ourselves have. Now that is very understandable. That is like big electoral posters and with our faces on them. If you look at them from a distance, generally they look rather well because you don't see the wrinkles, you don't see uh, other not so nice things. And the closer you come, the closer you come, the more of course you see the, the slightest little defect. Every single wrinkle, every single spot, everything becomes visible. And that's why we are much more critical of the Union because we are in it, confronted with it every day from close-up, than people who watch it from distance. But still we, would know, we should know, realize, never forget, that we are being looked at with great expectations. Yes, we are an, an economic global player, but we are not the only one. Interdependence is of total evidence. Trade can be an asset. We should use it, but just to be careful also on another element, which is effectiveness. That's out of responsibility we can never forget. The uh, European emissions trading system, although it is often uh, seen as not being particularly um, successful in its first stage, it is once more, I would remind you, the, the envy of much of the rest of, of the world. We felt particularly it should include aviation and shipping as soon as possible. Aviation is due to come into the system, but we felt this should be brought forward as much as possible and that shipping should be included as well. And we also have to be a lot tougher in terms of the auctioning of, uh, of emission uh, uh, allowances. There is, amongst other, corruption, the lack of uh, reliability in the legal system, and the lack of basic education and vocational training. And there is an added difficulty. There is very little integration between the various countries of North Africa themselves. There are no transversal infrastructures and the amount of trade between uh, them is amongst the lowest in the world, the lowest in the world between neighbors. The challenge for us is not only to break the inherent conservatism of the Grand Coalition, where a failing European People's Party Europe is propped up by a socialist poodle pinching crumbs from the table. Our challenge is to build a new consensus around liberal democrat ideas. If you want to know about these, buy my latest book. It's available at a ridiculously reasonable price on my website or in any respectable bookshop. 
Do we want to be popular to our people or do we want to foster an open society worldwide? There are two different questions and I think it needs different answer. Trade is very seldom the problem. Sometimes it is even the beginning of the solution. But nothing can be seen and touched upon as an ideological tool. It's not a yes or no by ideology. It's a yes or no out of effectiveness to the people we are, we presume to help. The flowers of liberalism have seeded themselves in greater or lesser quantities into the thought of others. So don't be afraid of other people moving onto our ground. Embrace them. Be confident in the power of liberal ideas. Use their attachment to our ideas for the benefit of Europe and its neighbors and indeed the wider world. The Mediterranean was the cradle of great civilizations that have had an influence on practically the whole of humanity. To a greater or to a lesser extent, we are all its heirs, and it is the responsibility of all of us to care for it and ensure that the sea that has given rise to such great ideas and movements does not become a desert of dead expectations. Thank you very much. And look at the political decisions that have to be taken in 18 months' time. The appointment of a President of the European Commission, a President of the European Council, a President of the European Parliament, and the European Union's High Representative for Foreign Policy. Our political family could feel damn fine candidates for each of those posts. And we must not let the Grand Coalition carve them up between the two bigger parties. We can. We can wield influence, but we can only wield influence if we can build alliances and only if we are united. I want to go for a very strong program and a number of very clear points on which we can de develop a truly liberal vision, a truly liberal perspective. The longer we leave practical action on climate change, the more we risk the state taking over much more power and having to be far more assertive. So the earlier we tackle climate change in a real and effective form, the less likely our individual choices, our individual freedoms are likely to remain. And clearly it's around this area that the European elections in 2009 will be particularly important, where we believe we have a particularly vital and unique message. But at the same time, I won't lose sight of what I, I'll come back to that, what I consider to be the greatest challenge of all. And it's a very urgent one. It's a challenge to see to it that world peace is being maintained. I'm getting very worried, dear friends, that some people, President George W. Bush, the first among them, start speaking about a third world war as if, well, well, okay, it's an occurrence, we, a possibility we should, we should seriously consider. It should have us worried sick, not only because of the, of the risk, but because of the totally irresponsible behavior that is displayed in this occurrence. So my challenge to you today is this. Free Europe from its political slumber. Reignite the fire of ideas. And as we approach the European elections, go out and win Europe for the Liberal Democratic Center. We will need to keep watch over what's going on in the world. And we'll need to keep watch that our parties don't lose sight of the bigger picture, that they don't lose sight of the bigger pic picture, not only beyond what happens to themselves, not only beyond what happens in their country, not only beyond what happens in Europe and in the Union, but that they keep watch over what happens worldwide. I did not know how truthful was what I said uh, two days ago, how truthful was 
what I said two days ago, that we can't afford to leave the world alone. We can't afford to do that because every event, every single hour, unfortunately, demonstrates that the world is not willing to leave us alone, as the saying goes. <laughs>